Grace and peace, everybody. You cannot be unborn again. You cannot lose your salvation. You cannot forfeit everlasting life. It lasts forever. John chapter 3, starting in verse 4, you have a conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus Christ. Nicodemus asked the question, how can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Now, Nicodemus didn't understand what the Lord was saying. The Lord was referring to being born of the Spirit. This happens at the moment of belief. <clears throat> So Nicodemus was wrestling with this idea of being born again, and Jesus broke it down for him. Um, we have two births. We have the natural birth, that is being born of water. That's just the natural birth that we all go through. And in order to get to heaven, in order to be a citizen of heaven, we must be born of the Spirit. That is the second birth, that is being born again. And once you're born again, you cannot be unborn again. Just like I cannot go back into my mother's womb and be unborn and reverse things. I've been born and it's a done deal. I'm born. I'm here. I'm my mother's son. No matter what I do, I was born of her. She could denounce me. She could um, say I'm not her son anymore. I could say you're not my mother anymore. But guess what? I'm born of her. I am her son. I am my dad's son. Period. Nothing can change that. No action of mine. No action of hers or his. It's a wrap. I've been born of them. And nothing can change that. Same thing goes when a person is born of the Spirit. You are now a part of God's family. He is your Father. You were born now of His Spirit. Sealed, secure, forever. And no action of yours or anybody else can change that. You've been born of His Spirit. You are his forever. You are his forever. You know, I have <clears throat> I have five children. Literally just had a baby girl. Her name's Nora on Christmas Day, 1225, 2022. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for her. Beautiful gift, beautiful Christmas gift. She is the youngest of now five total. And no matter what my kids do in life, me and my wife, we try to raise them, um, obviously in a Christian household, and we raise them around believers and teach them scripture. But at the end of the day, as they grow older, they have their um, own choices to make. And let's say one of them or some of them just go down the wrong path and make some really knucklehead choices like we've all done, including myself, many, many times. No matter what they do as my children, I will always love them. Always. And they will never not be my children. They have been born of my wife and me. And nothing can change that. No matter what they do or say, no matter what I do or say, they are my children. That's it, period, period. How much more the love of God. Once we are born of his spirit, born into his family the moment we trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ his love is unconditional 
and nothing can change the fact that we are now born again, born of his spirit. No matter what we do or say, we are his, eternally secure. Not to mention, the moment we trusted in the finished work of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection according to scripture, we received at that moment the free gift of everlasting life. If you could lose your salvation or be unborn again in some way, that life wouldn't be everlasting. We couldn't trust God's word if we could lose our salvation. Because that would mean that it's not really everlasting life. Everlasting life lasts forever. It's not temporary life. It's not probationary life. He gives us everlasting life as a free gift the moment we believe. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 12 through 14, we hear the gospel, we hear the good news, we believe, and we're sealed in that order. We're sealed by his spirit. We're sealed by his Holy Spirit of promise. It's a done deal. For those out there who insist that a person can lose salvation or be unborn again somehow. That right there is sin in itself because the root of that is pride. Like a gross amount of pride. <clears throat> because what you're saying is Jesus Christ didn't do enough. If I don't do my part too, then I can be unborn again or I can lose eternal life, everlasting life. I can lose something that's everlasting. The root is pride and self-righteousness to the max. You're trusting in yourself plus Jesus when Jesus did it all. Ask yourself this question. Did Jesus Christ do enough by himself to save your soul for all eternity? Did he do enough by himself to save your soul for all eternity? If the answer is no, you got a huge problem. If you answer it, if you're a person who believes you can lose your salvation, answer that question honestly. Because you would be crazy to say that, no, he didn't do enough. But that's what you're saying if you say you can lose your salvation. You're saying he did not do enough by himself to save your soul for all eternity. The good news is that his work, his finished work is sufficient. He's not coming back to this earth to shed his blood for any more sins. Roughly 2,000 years ago, when his blood was shed on the cross, he paid for every sin you have committed, are committing, and will ever commit. It's done. It's finished. There is nothing you can contribute to his finished work. There's nothing that I can add to his finished work. All I can do is be thankful beyond words and accept his free gift of eternal life. All I can do is believe, realize that that is true. Jesus Christ came in the flesh. He paid for all of my sins and he was buried. He rose again the third day according to scripture. And he did it for me, for you, for whosoever believes. Scroll down in that same chapter, John chapter 3, that famous verse, John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that is anyone, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It doesn't say whosoever gets baptized. It doesn't say whosoever is obedient. It doesn't say Whosoever turns from their sins. It doesn't say whosoever keeps the Sabbath. It doesn't say 
whosoever you fill in the blank. It just says, whosoever believeth in him. And if you haven't done that, if you if you were to die today and you don't know where you would spend eternity, I encourage you and urge you to believe in the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the creator of all things according to John chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, all throughout Scripture. Jesus Christ who came in the flesh. Trust in Him and His finished work alone today and you are born again at that moment. Never to be lost, never to be forgotten. You might ask, well, you can't just... Where do good works come in then? You know, where we we got to do good. We got to good works. OK. Good works are good to do. And Christians should be doing good works, but good works have absolutely nothing to do with a person getting to heaven. Absolutely nothing. Good works are simply a thank you to our Lord and Savior for what he did for us. Good works are simply us walking in the works that he prepared for us beforehand. Good works are actually for the benefit of others. For them to hear the good news and be saved. To show our appreciation to our Lord and Savior. Good works are a part of your growth and development in Christ as a believer. Not salvation. Not being born again. Good works have nothing to do with salvation. You have to. You have to separate the two. It's so important to separate salvation from Christian growth and maturity. Discipleship, if you will. So, don't want this video to run too long. Um, you could never be unborn again. It's not biblical. It's not practical. Everlasting life is everlasting life. You cannot lose it. Grace and peace.